Hi, this is Abby from Witchcraft and Criminal History. How are you doing today? Well, today we're going to be talking about Elizabeth Bathory. This is a case from the 1600s. And it's a very, very fascinating case. If you guys are wondering where Bran Stoker got his inspiration for Count Dracula, he got it from Elizabeth Bathory. She was also known as the Blood Countess. She was born in fifteen. She was born in fifteen sixty, on the seventh of August. On the, on the seventh of August, she had over six hundred victims, all of which were female, and some were as young as twelve years of age. She, these were all servants as well. They were all servants, and all of the her victims were coming around from the local towns wherever her castles were. And she had over seventeen of them. She had castles and land in both Hungary and Transylvania. So she had a lot of land. And she was also extremely powerful. She was related to to a lot of kings. This was also the same time period as Elizabeth the First, which I'm gonna be going back and forth in regards to these two Elizabeths. Her main, her favourite castle, the castle which she was predominantly in, was in Chastis, which is in now modern-day Slovakia. She died in 1614. And she actually died alone. She was in, She was locked up in her room for four years prior to her death. But during her time, she, like I said, she killed a lot of people. She started um, torturing people, which has been documented, what we know, since she was 15 when she married her husband, Fernando Cassie. I apologise if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. He actually introduced her to most of the torture, even though in earlier life in, with her, this is some suggestion that she usually she saw it from her family because a lot of her family did a lot of torturing of others because there was a lot of insanity in the Baffrey family because there was a lot of inbreds a lot of inbreeding because ma ma money married money pretty much so all the noble families all the royal families were all pretty much related which is kind of scary for me because my one of my ancestors. Like, I come from, I'm the descendant of the Cromwells. The Cromwells were, um, were a noble family. And they were around in Elizabeth um, Baffrey's time. They were around, and they were actually part, the power behind the throne of England during the Tudor times. That's before they got... <laughs> so, that just to uh, prove, you know, that, a lot of the families are related, so there might be a chance that I do have some blood of Elizabeth Baffrey in me, which is a little bit scary. <laughs> yes, yeah, so anyway. Her husband died in battle in 1604. So when her husband was away or after, she, after he died, she was in charge of all of her castles. She was in charge of military aspects. She kept everything running. And for that, really, keeping those countries running, especially in the 1600s, you have to take you out of the door. Because that wasn't really easy. It was a hard thing to do. There's a lot of myths and rumours in regards to Elizabeth Bathory. And a lot of cover-ups, especially within Hungary at, at present time. Some of them said that she was a healer. That these young girls were pregnant at the time and she was like a modern day doctor trying to do abortions which in my personal personal view I think that's a lot of bollocks and a lot of the other people who also study this case also agree with me and pretty much you know about four years prior to her death because she died at 54 they sent George Tarot, 
to investigate um, Baffery's castle because there was a lot of complaints from the surrounding area and also a complaint from another noble family whose daughter was a singer who went to perform to Elizabeth Baffery and never was seen again and was later on found that she was tortured and murdered by Elizabeth Baffery. And that's how she got caught. If she stayed with peasants, no one would have cared, and she could have kept killing and killing and killing to the day she died. But she, her bloodlust got too much for her, and she decided to kill more and more and more. She realised when one day when she was, you know, get, getting her hair done by one of her many servants, that her servant accidentally pulled her hair, and she actually slapped this woman. And when she slapped her, the lady actually bled, and some of the blood fell onto Elizabeth Baffery's hand. And it said that she saw, saw that it was very rejuvenating, and she, and she really, really liked that, because she didn't want to grow old. She didn't want to grow old, she didn't want to look, lose her looks. She was a very, very vain lady. Very, very vain. And looks were everything to her. She successfully married off her daughters, and she was very proud of her son. And and in the will, she, you know, really entrusted everything into her, all of her lands to her son. She was definitely a sex addict. She was sexually active way before she got married at the age of fifteen. Pretty much, she was pretty much like the Paris Hilton of the day. If she wanted sex with you, you had to oblige. Pretty much. Have sex with me or get or get thrown out or something like that. So she was well and truly a sex bot. <laughs> she was also a sexual sadist. Majority of sexual sadists are um, also psychopaths. So she was a psychopath and she was also a sexual sadist. We can really tell that because most of her victims had, cry had injuries in their private area. All of them had injuries down there, and one of her um, one of her aunts was actually a lesbian, and it was a, a well known lesbian, and there is suspicions that Elizabeth Baffery was bisexual. She loved not only men but she also loved women as well. Okay, and. But when this guy, George Terra, came to investigate her castle, right off the bat they found nine girls. Some of them were dead, some of them were dying, but they were all were tortured and mutilated. So it wasn't disease, it wasn't like the plague gone through and they couldn't get rid of the bodies quick enough because of the plague, which also was around at that particular time. And they actually questioned all of her servants. And only, and only about, so out of 300 servants, which the noble people questioned in regards to Elizabeth's crimes, only four of them said they had no idea what was going on. So there's a lot of people who knew that something wasn't, wasn't right with Elizabeth Baffery. And for quite some time, a lot of people were making complaints about the... Elizabeth Baffery. So it, so something wasn't the norm even back then. Yes, there was torture. Yes, sometimes they tortured servants, and that was quite common. But what they were doing wasn't common. All right, let's have a little discussion. Okay. All right, we're going to have a little discussion, but we're going to do that in part two. This is part one. Because I'm just seeing the time and it's a little bit, it's a, getting on, on a little bit. And there's a lot to talk about. Alright, so join me in part two and have a great day. Blessed be.